Hello guys, welcome to another video. A couple of weeks ago I released a video on how I run Xpenology on a Gen 8 microserver from HP. In that same video I showed you some network products I received that day. It was a Ubiquiti Edgerouder XSFP as you see on the screen behind me and an APEC Lite access point. Later that night I have installed and configured both of them and I've been running them till now. And in this video I'm going to share my experience with you where they're hard to set up and how do they perform. So let's dive right into it. As you can see on the screen behind me, we have the Edge Router XSFP. Uh, this is the router I have ordered from uh, Ubiquiti. And it comes with an SFP fiber port. I do not use that one. I use a cable router. I have it directly connected to Ethernet Zero. Um, it also has PoE, Power Over Ethernet. And Power Over Ethernet is supported on all the four ports except port 5. And I use Ethernet 4, if I'm correct, for powering my ECAP Lite access point from Ubiquiti. I will go to that one in a bit. It's not that hard to set up, but if you don't have any knowledge about networks or a little bit, um, it can be a real pain in the ass to configure this router. So once configured, you're ready to go. As we move down the page, you can see they have an, a PoE device connected to it, just like I did. Um, world leading price performance. I can agree with that. Um, for just a router without Wi-Fi capabilities or whatsoever, it's not the intention of this router. Some people will say it's a little bit pricey. I think otherwise. Uh, you can adjust anything to your liking. So it's highly customizable. Uh, I've paid around 80 euros for this. Uh, gigabit connectivity, of course, um, all the ports are gigabit. Uh, also, the SFP optical port is gigabit. You can Edge OS, that's the operating system this router runs on. Very clear and easy to use. I will show you in a bit. Um, also, you have the option to configure your router through command line interface. And they also have an alternative model without the SFP port. This router comes with a 24 volts, a two amp uh, adapter, which also powers the PoE ports uh, on them. If you connect more PoE devices than one, um, bear in mind that it can only push out 50 watts in total. Okay, so that's the router. Let's see the user interface now. When you've configured your router and you log back into it, you will be presented with the main dashboard screen. It will show you the network activity it has. Um, it will also show you the interface configuration. So as you can see, I've so as you can see, I've configured the Ethernet zero port for my internet connection. It's directly connected to my cable modem, and the ports Ethernet one to four are my switch ports, and I've configured the switch for that group of ports. Um, I've also, as you can see here, configured Ethernet 4 to be POA capable. And on that port I have connected, as you can guess, my AP from Ubiquiti. And it's directly powered through the Ethernet cable. As we move over to the left now, you can see I have three connected clients through DHCP. One with a static IP. Um, Network address translation is enabled. Uh, the firewall also enabled with two rule sets and four rules. And the HP server is also enabled. Otherwise, the other clients wouldn't get an IP address. If we move over to the top now, um, right next to dashboard, you have traffic analysis. Then you have the routing and the routing capabilities. The firewall and network address translation with all the port forwarding. Uh, then you have uh, services, and here you can see the DHCP server I'm running. Uh, also domain name server is listed here. And PPPoA, I also I don't use that function. Uh, and if we move on, we have VPN, quality of service. Haven't configured that one either. Basic and advanced. Users. Um, here you can create users you want to give access to your router and the kind of level uh, access they have. Uh, the config tree uh, with policies and rule sets. 
And you have the wizard, which can help you to set up the edge router from the start. So if we move further to the top, we have the CLI. Once you click this, it will open a command line interface. You can also log in with your credentials and um, adjust the settings from there. Haven't used that option as I mentioned before. And next to CLI, we have the toolbox option. It displays you a couple of diagnostic tools, ping, bandwidth, trace, discover, packet capture, and lock monitor. If you need it, you can find them here real handy. So things I want to do with the router is um, still configure the OpenVPN connection. Discover some more options on the router I haven't covered. But basically that's, uh, that's it. Yeah, that's the router. So let's move over to the access point I also bought from Ubiquiti. And that's the APAC Lite. It's a 1200 megabit uh, Wi-Fi access point. 300 Mbit on the 2.4 gigahertz band and 866 megabit on the 5 gigahertz band. Setting this up was a little bit frustrating. I've read the manual and it told me I had to install the software from Ubiquiti on my computer. I did that. The first time I ran that software, um, it gave me some options like creating an account and um, filling in your network SSID name and password. And after that, it couldn't connect to it anymore. But the Wi-Fi was enabled. Also, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz had the same name. That was a little bit annoying. Um, but once I did the speed test, it um, got about around um, 240 megabits, I believe. It was on my Android device. I was hoping I could configure a little bit more than just the SSID and the password on it and manage it from other devices. So just connect through the IP address it gets from DHCP and set up the access point from there. But that was not an option. I tried installing the uh, Unify software on my Android device, but the only thing it could do was display me the IP address of the access point it was getting from the router but I couldn't connect to it. So the easiest way I figured was just to reset the thing and start over again. So I did that and I configured the access point from the Unify app on my mobile phone. Um, I had a little bit more options um, didn't use the Unify uh, uh, cloud ID I created. I just created a local account and a password. But once configured again, I couldn't connect to it. I'm planning on to configuring the access point again in this video and try to run these steps again and hopefully it will work just fine. Um, but the Unify access point, um, it's a nice device. Looks a bit like a smoke detector, but more trendy. Um, sleek ultra compact design, just like Ubiquiti says. Yeah, I can agree with that for optimal RF performance yeah okay uh, spectral analysis band steering and airtime fairness it has some advanced features I haven't played with scalable enterprise Wi-Fi management so if I'm correct um, with the Unify controller software you can just read out all the data on the access point which I wasn't able to do that looks real nice I will give that a try. And the model comparison, I have the most simple version, uh, 300 Mbits on 2.4, 867 on the 5 gigahertz band, 24 volt passive PoE, and a gigabit Ethernet connection for the high throughput. Okay, so I think it's an idea to just do a speed test with my iPhone now and see how it performs and then give it a reset and try to configure it again through the controller software I downloaded from Ubiquiti. Okay, so the download speed is 94 Mbit and the upload speed is 30 Mbit. Okay, now let's reset the access point and start configuring this from the computer. So, 
after trying for 50 minutes. I couldn't get the damn thing off the ceiling. I guess the anti-theft system of Ubiquiti works really well. I searched for a manual and what I found, the locking tab. During installation, the locking tab on the mounting bracket moves from the initial position to the vinyl position where the locking tabs fit securely into the locking notch. I can agree with that. If you need to remove the Unify EP from the mounting bracket, insert the paper clip in the slot to release the locking tab and turn the Unify AP counterclockwise. Well, between the Unify AP and my ceiling is not enough room to get a paper clip between. So I figured if that is not going to work, um, let's try it through command line. So let's fire up um, Putty and see if we can get an SSH connection to the AP and reset it from there. Okay, let's move this over to this screen. Yes. Okay. Um, host name. Let's fill in the IP address of the AP. Login. Yeah, the password. That was the real problem. Um, ha! First try. Okay. Now we need the command or resetting this thing and that should be this command well what do you know oh okay i guess that's normal and i think the device just reset itself let's wait for it to boot up and then see if we can access it through the Unify controller software. Okay. Okay, so we have our Unify access point. Next, secure SSID. What will we call this? Well, we'll we configure it again anyway, so for now, I will just call it. Wi Fi. Give it a lot of thought. Uh, password. Okay. Wi Fi password next. UBNT is the username and the password. Okay. Confirm. Yes. Next. Netherlands, yeah, that's right. Okay, finish. You no. Let's skip this step for now. Ooh. This looks promising. Sign in. This is what I wanted to see earlier. So this is the software we saw before on the website. Um, I think I have some more things to play with now. We can see statistics, quick look, most active, okay, map. Oh, that's real cool. Too bad it's not my home. I live in a small apartment, so I only have, have bought one uh, AP of them. So let's connect the iPhone and see if um, see how it performs now. Okay. So we now have a connection with a Wi-Fi, and it also does find my iPhone. Okay. Cool. Let's do a speed test then. Start speed test. That's a real different score than back before. That's a really good score. Yeah, the upload can't go any higher with my bandwidth. <coughs> 
well i must admit i did not have any problems with the wi-fi whatsoever um streaming with um, two google chromecasts i have one in the living room and one in the bedroom um did not lost connection once in the in the last two weeks um it also was real fast with streaming uh, uh youtube material netflix uh, that kind of stuff the synology apps i use uh, ds video and uh, ds audio i didn't have any complaints uh, about that it worked really well so um, this is promising i can uh, manage this now i will explore this uh, a little bit more and so the only thing i have left to show you now is the the land speed I can just copy some files, of course, from one side to another and see how fast that is going. And we just, yeah, get some video material. I have a video right here. Let's pick one. All recorded videos. Uh, let's get this one of 18 gigs. Yeah, it should be enough. Let's move that over to this side. Okay. Okay. So overall it's doing about 80 megabytes per second, I believe. It has some drops down to 30, I think 20. Let's stop this for now. Don't need that file. Okay. Yes. Okay. So my final conclusion on this. Yeah. The um, access point, uh, the router and the TP-Link switch. I bought them as a set for, I think, 240 euros. Yeah, it's not cheap. But if you compare it to a uh, Netgear Nighthawk router or an, um, an high-end Asus router or what kind of brand doesn't really matter but if you compare it to that yeah then it's fine uh, those routers also sell at about the same price level even more expensive for some models and I think you have more freedom with this setup if I need to scale it I can just add another access point pair them together and I will get more coverage um, the router is hooked up to the TP-Link 8 port gigabit switch and uh, the access point is connected through PoE to the router. So yeah, this is, uh, this is real cool. Um, I couldn't get this to work uh, the, the first time, but it looks promising now. I will have some fun um, exploring all the settings and the options it uh, provides. My conclusion, is this a good solution for everyone? The access point, maybe. The router, not so much. If you have no knowledge of networks or setting up your own router, for that matter, I don't think this is the way to go for you. And I think you're better off buying a router that's configured right out of the box and you just plug in the cables and you're good to go. But if you like sorting things out, playing with settings, um, maybe using all the advanced function it provides you, um, the enterprise functionalities it has, yeah, then I think this is real cool equipment. And I think this is the way to go for you. So, thanks for watching. Until the next one. Bye.